Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to share what I use for my settings on a Mac computer for sublimation. And I actually struggle to have all of my setting options pop up. So I thought this would be a great video if you are trying to figure out your settings for sublimation. I do have a Mac computer, but my husband has a Windows laptop. So let me know if you want to see how to set up the sublimation settings on a Windows and I can try to do a video on that as well. So I already did a video showing how to add sublimation ink into an Epson Echo Tank. In that video, I showed how to add the sublimation ink and also on the sublimation printer, how to get that set up. And I even go into this here and show how to download the driver but I didn't have the right driver, so I am going to show you this part really quickly as well. So the first part of this video, I am just showing you how to download the correct driver for your settings, and the second half of the video, I'll show you what settings that you'll need for sublimation, and I can put the timestamps down below if you wanna to skip to just the max settings. My printer is an Epson Echo Tank 2760, but I'm pretty sure this will work for basically any Epson printer that you have. What you'll do is go up to the search bar right here. Then you're just going to type in what printer you have. So I'm going to type in mine. Then it'll pop up on the side where it shows your printer. So you might have a different model and you might not even have an echo tank, but whatever type of printer you have, just search for that. Then select on support. Now, when you come down here, you'll see where it says operating system and it says Mac OS 10.15. You want to make sure that you're downloading a driver version that is 10 or higher. When I had originally downloaded this about a month ago, I had downloaded the Mac 10.15, but when I went to my settings, not all of the options were popping up. So then I did some research and found out that the Epson website had a bug that wasn't detecting the correct version of Mac OS. So it was downloading the driver package for the wrong version. That sounds a little complicated, but if you have already downloaded your driver here, you can go see what version it's at. So what you do is go up to the Apple, then you'll go to System Preferences, then you'll want to go to Printers and Scanners. Just double click on that. My printer is the Epson 2760, so I'm going to select on Options and Supplies. When you go to that, it'll show you your driver version. So my version right now is 10.93. When I had originally downloaded this, it was actually like 2.0 or 3.0. I can't remember exactly what number it was, but I knew that it was the wrong version because of that. You want it to be 10 or higher. So basically, once you've downloaded your driver for your printer, you just want to go to this Apple system prep preferences and go to your printer settings, and you'll just want to make sure that's above a 10. If for some reason it's not above a 10 like mine, I will show you what I had to do really quickly. I had to go to my finder, and I went down to where it says Macintosh HD. Then I went up to the search bar, and I typed in Epson. I only have a couple things here, but you might have quite a few others. What you'll want to do is just highlight over it and delete it. You want to make sure that you delete any type of file that says Epson in it or else it won't work. Somehow I had missed a file and it still wasn't working. But basically when you search Epson, you're going to want to delete. You'll just highlight over it, right click and hit move to trash. And I would also go to your trash bin and remove it from that as well. Once you do that, you can go back to your Epson website and download that again. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have questions about in the comments. And that's just for those that it didn't download correctly. If you look at the version you have and it's over 10, then you are good. But basically, once you have your printer set up, you'll come on here and you need to download your driver. And this is it here. It says Drivers and Utilities Combo Package. You can click on Drivers here and they have it separated, but this will download everything all at once. So I just recommend doing that one. And then you'll hit Download. I already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to do it again. 
but basically you just follow the prompts on there and it's pretty easy you just follow what it says and actually I will link my YouTube video where I showed how to turn my Epson printer into a sublimation printer and I actually walked through that whole process so I will leave that linked down below so now I'm finally getting into the actual sublimation settings. I just wanted to make sure that you have the correct version first. And actually, one more thing before I go to my printer settings to show you how I set that up. I'm going to go back up to my Apple and System Preferences. Also, I just want to point out that I have two Epson printers. I have the Epson Echo Tank and the Epson Workforce. This printer I use for sublimation and this printer I use for my inkjet printer. What I'm going to do now is actually change the name of this printer so that I don't get it confused. So I have my Echo Tank selected, then I'm going to go to Options and Supplies, and right here you can change the, type, the name of it, so I'm going to type in Sublimation. There's one other thing that I highly recommend for setting up on this screen, is if you go to Options, and where it says high speed printing, it should automatically be on. But for sublimation, you actually don't want the high speed printing on. So you're going to want to go to this and click off. And you will definitely notice a difference once it starts printing. It takes like double the time. It's not too long, but I noticed that it really helps make the colors look even better. You can also see your supply level. And if you go to utility here, you can also print a test page or do a clean print head. So now that we have that off and I have a name to sublimation, I'm just going to hit OK and it will save that for me. I'm just going to open up Silhouette Studio, but there is a lot of other programs that you can use for printing your sublimation designs. The printer settings should be very similar depending on what program you're using. Even though I just have a blank page here, I'm going to go to print. Also, I just want to point out over here, you can choose your media size. So I'm just doing 8.5 by 11. But whatever size paper you're printing, you'll want to change it there. But now I'm going to go up to File and select Print. Also with Silhouette Studio, you can just use their free version for printing, which is pretty nice. So now I'm just going to select Print again. Here it'll show up with some options that we can change before we print. So it's our printer settings. It's showing up with the layout. I'm going to select that. Then I'm going to go down to print settings. Here I'm going to change a few things. I'm going to go over to my media type. I'm going to select that and choose premium presentation paper mat. When I was doing research with sublimation, Almost everyone had recommended that. I actually saw a couple people recommend the plain paper or bright white paper, but I really like this setting. I feel like my colors have been really vibrant, so I will select that one. The next one says print quality. When you select on this, you'll want to choose high quality or just the highest quality option that it has. Then coming down here, you're going to want to mirror your image. It's just like HTV or iron-on, you always want to mirror your design. So those are the main settings for that, but there also is color settings. So I'm going to go up to my color matching, and I purchased Cosmo Ink, and they actually have a color profile for Cosmo Ink, which I think is awesome because it really makes a difference with how good the colors look and how they match with what's on the computer. So I already installed the Cosmo Ink color profile and I will, and I showed that in the video where I showed how to set up my sublimation printer. So I'll link that down below also and I'll put some timestamps for that as well. If you aren't using Cosmo Ink, I think a good option would be to choose Adobe RGB. If you use Hippo Ink, I know that's another popular sublimation ink. I know that company is working on color profiles, so hopefully they will get that out soon. But what I'm going to do is select Color Sync. It'll have automatic, and you can see the Cosmo Ink here. That didn't show up the first time. What I had to do is go to Other Profiles, and here's all the options. 
you can see the Adobe RGB there. So if you don't have a color profile, I would probably do that one, like I said earlier. But here's the Cosmo ink, and also like I said, I'll link down below how I added that to my computer. But I'm just going to select OK, and you can see it'll show up right here. Now if you go back to like printer settings, you can see it's still there. And I don't really do anything else with the rest of these. So now that I have all of that set up, then I'm ready to click print. One last thing that is very helpful too, if you don't wanna go through and change all of these every time, and also sometimes it's easy to forget to change something, like you don't wanna to forget to mirror your image. For a Windows, it's pretty easy to set it up, but for a Mac, I could not figure out what to do. And then someone commented on one of my YouTube channels, and she goes up to here where it says presets, and instead of doing default settings, you just go to last use settings and it will keep everything the same from last time, so you don't even have to set it up every time. So if I go to my color matching, it has my Cosmo ink, and this is all from the last time that I printed. So that's really nice. But that's basically it for the Mac printer settings. Let me know if you have any questions. The driver part of it is a little confusing, also, let me know if you want me to show how to get all the settings correct on a Windows computer. I would be happy to do that. And I hope you found this video helpful. I would love it if you subscribe to my channel if you're new. I do lots of Cricut videos, but I'm also getting into a little bit of sublimation videos as well.